Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in today's video, we're doing episode four of our GPZ design series, and that's gonna be the headlight. So we've already done our side engine cover, we've done the front fender, the triple clamp, and now the headlight. This should complete the front end for the most part, so we can start working our way back on the design side of things. So it's pretty straightforward in this video, we're gonna talk about an overview of the process, what we're doing, why, and how. The next video will go step-by-step -step through the process of scanning what we need to in designing our part. So today's video, the headlight, we're doing this because of a design decision. We're making a custom bike, we're doing a custom tail section, we're getting it to look the way that we want. So it just makes sense that we make a fairing or a headlight or something so that it completes the design. Now, I heard something recently that um, you're, you're rich or wealthy if you have something that you can't buy. Being able to design a one-off part it's gonna be unique, and in the world of custom cars or motorcycles, that's something that you can't just go out and buy. So being able to design and make our own part is something that's worth its weight in gold. So what we're gonna be doing is going over all the parts that I used here, what we did, what the final result is gonna hopefully be, because it's not ever done, right? And then we'll go into the next video where we walk through that step-by-step. -step. So that's kind of why we're doing it. So we have something unique. Now how we did it, takes a little bit of time. This is not even the original idea I had for this bike. This bike, when I got it, was basically stock. It had the front fairing on it. It had a square headlight on it. I put dual rounds on it at one point in time. I put a Triumph Daytona headlight on it at one point in time. I had dual rectangular lights on it. I had a single round on it, and I've just done all kinds of different headlight setups on this bike over the years. I always wanted to do something a little bit more custom. Back around 2007, I did a custom bike design called the Airhead. This was an air-powered bike based off of four scuba tanks. And with that, I was big into Street Fighters at the time. And I designed a headlight that was basically just a number plate and it had a vertical strip of LEDs on it. I really liked the way that that looked and I always kind of wanted to do something like that for a you know, physical bike. So when I started to plan this out and think about what I wanted to do, because the last iteration of this, I started to convert it to a track bike. So no lights on it, anything like that. But as I'm starting to put it back, I still want to keep that minimal race inspired look. So I went with Adafruit and I bought some of these neon tubes. These are basically just LEDs in this emissive plastic. They're sort of molded in. And I played around with these. I really liked the way that it looked. Because of the age of this bike, I'm not actually required to have a headlight legally. I'm sure I would get pulled over, but um, it's not actually required because of its age, it's vintage, it's antique, I don't need inspection. So I started to think about what could I do that would be cool that incorporated this. Um, I went out and I bought some voltage regulators. So these were just some cheap one I found online that, that would work that goes from 12 volts to nine volts. With these LED tubes, or you know the LED setup here, basically as you reduce the voltage, it gets dimmer, pretty straightforward. So I had envisioned using this nine volt regulator to do a low beam, and then just 12 volt from the bike to do a high beam, so it did look official. Now, I like the way that this looked. I've even got some red ones that I'm gonna try to incorporate for a tail light design when we do the tail section. But the problem with this is it's really flexible, but it doesn't bend in the direction I need. Uh, I actually designed and printed a couple of these little fairing pieces with the idea that the LEDs would go in these slots, but it just can't match the shape. And that's a big problem because I don't want just a flat panel on the front. So I quickly abandoned that after a couple of attempts and decided to go a different direction. I've got, well, I've sold a bike recently. If you have been watching, you'll notice there's no expansion chamber and some of the parts are gone from here. Um, but I've had several KTMs over the years. I still have one. And this is a sort of a factory KTM EXC or Enduro headlight. And I just had this laying around. I don't have a bike that it fits anymore. My bike has a 2015 sort of front end clamp setup on it. So I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and I'll use the light from this. It's DOT. I like the shape of it, the look of it. And it's pretty light. It's all plastic. And then I can also use the rubber mounts that came from this and kind of copy what's going on behind here to incorporate it into my own headlight design. So with that, I went about scanning the KTM light. Now, because it's chromed plastic on the back and it's clear on the front, 
obviously we can't just scan it. So I used some of RevoPoint's um, vanishing spray. So we've got permanent spray. And we've also got vanishing scan spray that stays on for two to four hours and then it sort of dissipates on its own. So I sprayed that on everything and I started playing around scanning it. Now for this process, I actually did test the Metro X as well as the Morocco. Uh, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know the Morocco is my go-to scanner. It's portable, it's easy to use. It's kind of the one I use whenever I come into the garage. So I don't need a laptop, I don't need to set everything up. The Morocco did okay with this part, but the size of it and the lack of features on the lens kind of put it in, into that weird range where it was a little bit too big for near mode on the Morocco and on far mode, I just couldn't get quite the detail I needed on the backside. So on the Morocco, I scanned the front in far mode and the back in near mode because I had enough features to do it. The Metro X, because the depth cameras are a little bit wider apart than the near mode in the Morocco, worked pretty well. So I scanned it a couple times. I scanned the front lens from the left and the right, and then I scanned the back from the left and the right, put all the scans together. I got a pretty highly detailed scan that I'm happy with. On the bike itself, I just used the Morocco on far mode. I did use the vanishing scan spray because we've got chrome for the forks and we've got shiny parts and we've got painted parts. So in order to get enough detail that would just give me an idea on the shape and the lines of the tank, as well as just kind of where things were like the cables and the forks and the triple clamp in space, I wanted to just get a rough scan in the computer. I then processed those in the RevoScan software and then moved them to Quick Surface. I wanted to use that because I really needed to make sure that the headlight scan was aligned, at least left to right. Because when we're using freeform design and we're using symmetry, we want to make sure that everything is at least perfect or if not very close so that we can play around with the design with symmetry and not have to work both sides of that equation. So with all that said, once it was processed in RevoScan, once it was aligned and, and any further cleanup had to happen in Quick Surface, brought it into Fusion to start playing around with the design. The headlight is obviously the critical part, getting it in the right orientation, making sure that the beam of light is facing where you want. The KTM light does have some adjustment to it. The bottom tab is slotted so it can move back and forth. And the two upper tabs are just meant to flex. Uh, that's how it works with the injection molded number plate. So that's how I'm using it here. I just got tabs that can flex a little bit on the top side. And then I just positioned it and started playing around with forms to figure out the shape that I wanted. Now, as we go through this, obviously I've already designed the part a couple times. Um, when we design it together, it will be slightly different because freeform modeling is a bit artistic. There's no numerical inputs to really get the same exact design. But that's okay because we just want to play around and we want to create a design that is unique and understand how the process works. So with this design, I really just tried to, from the side, follow the lines of the tank on the bike. I wanted to make sure that I had that sort of flowing transition. And then from the front, I really just tried to follow the shape of the headlight, making it flare out a bit and flare in where it needed to to match the, the lines of the KTM light. Now, if you're looking for an OEM light to use, this one was actually pretty cheap. Um, it's light, everything's plastic, so it doesn't have glass on it, it's not super heavy. That's important because I want to keep this bike as light as possible. The end goal, right now it's about 320 pounds. I'd love it to be closer to 300, but that's just not gonna work unless I get rid of the starter and, and hack off a lot more from it, and it, most of it's already gone anyways. So probably around 320 to 330 is my goal, so I don't wanna add a bunch of weight onto this thing. But if you're looking for OEM lights, there are plenty of OEM lights that have cool shapes. If you look at recent things like um, KTM Super Dukes or Ducati Street Fighters or any of these sort of naked semi-fared bikes, they have a lot of interesting and unique shape headlights. Some are obviously gonna be way more expensive than others. Um, this headlight and the surround, I don't remember exactly where I got it from, but I want to say it was like $50 total. You can buy just the light all to itself because you obviously won't need this piece, but just do a little searching around, find something that has a unique shape that you like that kind of fits with your design and then go from there. Um, these parts are printed with PLA CF. Um, it's pretty durable. Uh, it's, I think that this is going to work well. It is still um, three millimeters thick. It's kind of the default thickness that I use for parts like this. 
I did three traces on the walls. So any thicker regions, there is a thicker region in here where I connected the tabs. It is gonna have some infill in it. And then I basically just added all the extra features I needed. Uh, the tabs for the rubber straps for the fork, and I put a little mounting hole at the bottom so I can attach it to the lower triple clamp. So that way I've got three points of adjustment. Um, if I need it to get the light to go further out or further back, I can always play around with the tab that's gonna mount on the bottom and get an extra bit of adjustment there. And uh, the upper portion is just two round holes that those uh, straps go into so it can pivot around as much as it needs to. The final part is probably gonna stay printed. I don't think I will do this one in composite just because of all the mounting tabs and things that are needed on the inside. It would just be a bit of a pain and tricky to do. So I'll probably keep this one as a printed part. I might go with an SLA print and, and go that route so it's a little bit cleaner. This is by no means a bad print, but I, I think at the end of the day, probably an SLA type print is gonna give me better resolution and then I can prime it and paint it or, or use this. I, I don't really know at this stage. Um, in terms of the space and gap between the headlight, I'm still tossing around the idea of putting a tack in here. So I've got just a tachometer and this fits pretty well in this space. Um, it's not perfect. So what I might do is actually on the upper portion of this, flare it back forward a little bit to give me just a slightly more room for the tack. The Speedo is gonna be one that we design in this series. It's gonna be a GPS Speedo that goes in this tank pod. Um, this bike originally had a fuel gauge and some warning lights in this tank pod. And on the, the original triple clamp, there was another display that had some warning lights. And then obviously it had a Speedo and a tack. And all that stuff's gone. Um, the dash pod, I've got a Nexian display that'll fit in there. I've got the microcontroller and the GPS shield. So everything will go into this tank pod. We'll scan that, we'll likely design something that fits all the parts pretty well, and we'll go from there. Um, but that'll be next on the list as we kind of start to move our way backward. So that's the general process. In terms of the amount of time something like this takes, the idea behind it takes more time than the execution. I started with just some paper and some hand sketches taking a look at the fork line, the rough lines of the tank, and then just kind of shapes I wanted to explore. Then I moved on to scanning and getting these parts into the computer. And then from there, the design itself probably took 20, 20 minutes to hash out and then print the first version, which took about six hours. Uh, the second version was really just a couple of adjustments, moving the tabs around. And that was really it, just moving that around and, and making some very minor tweaks, printed the second version, which is on the bike now. The third version, there might be another change. Uh, I do need to make some adjustments. The fork clamps that I have are from my KTM, which is 48 millimeter fork, and these are 43, so they're just a bit big. I'll likely look for some clamps or some rubber straps that'll work, but in the meantime, I'm gonna print some spacers that will go from 43 to 48 and the rubber clamps will hold those onto the forks as well. So um, that'll solve that problem, at least in the short term. But if you wanna follow along with the scanning and design of this part, then make sure you check out the next episode in the series that we upload. We're gonna go through step-by-step -step in real time how to make that happen. But hopefully this gives you enough information on the process that was used to design these parts. It is critical if you are designing based off of something like an existing headlight, that you do have the ability to scan it. Um, unless it's a simple design that's round and it's got a standard mounting location, that might be okay. But when we're talking about something like this, um, the KTM light had a couple of points in space. These I can measure easy enough. The one down here at the bottom, that was the adjustment. That would be a little bit trickier because it was slightly off center. Um, the reason I know that is because I used that location to center the headlight left and right in quick surface and it was just slightly off. So you could get away with probably doing some rough measurements and taking a picture of a light like this. If it was any more complicated than that, you'd probably be out of luck. So something to keep in mind, I think the Metro X did really well in this case. I think that the, the Morocco was perfectly fine. I could use the scans as they were. 
because the backside was really what I needed all of the detail in and near mode was fine on the back side of the headlight. The front side of the headlight was the trickier part because of the lack of features. If I really wanted to, I could have put some pieces of tape or something on the lens and then just patch them over, but I really wanted to get a clean scan. So if you have any questions on this, please leave a comment, let me know. If you do want to see more of this series or anything else we cover on the channel, think about subscribing and then you'll be notified when we do release videos on this. Try to get them every two weeks, but that is difficult. Sometimes these projects take a little longer and other work gets in the way because um, YouTube is not my job. So it's just, uh, it, I have to fit it in when I can. So if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. If you wanna see more, make sure you wait for the next episode where we walk through this process. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Quack, 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 quack. <clears throat> Don't forget to like and subscribe.